welcome to this week's episode of the Komogi Report podcast brought to you by Tipperary Komogi TV, Tipperary Komogi's official YouTube channel. I'm Journey Canan and I'm delighted to be here this evening to talk about the FBD Insurance Adult Championships. We've had three weeks of games so far and um, it's time to reflect and look at how all the groups are going and um, it's been a very exciting championship already, lots of great scores, lots of drama. Uh, lots of exciting uh, results and a few shocks. Um, so in the weekend just gone in the FBD Insurance Junior A Championship, Money Call recorded a, a very good win over Holy Cross Ballycal, 214 to 110, seven point victory for Money Call. And they're unbeaten so far in the Junior A Championship and looking very good indeed, despite having Ray T now injured. So no doubt when they have everyone back, um, they were going to be reinforced to be reckoned with finalists last year and uh, started off the championship really well so far this year. And uh, Eve Larkin, excellent for them at full four. She scored two three against Holy Cross. Uh, so um, a good win there for Money God Holy Cross. Two defeats in a row. So they will look to uh, bounce back this weekend when they're at home to Drum and Inch. Uh, in the other group at the week, other game at the weekend, Brian Bruce had a very good win over Laura. Uh, 6 14 to 1 5. Laura had won their opening round against Ballina, um, but suffered a big defeat there to Brian Bruce. Six goals and 14 points to a goal and five points. So Brian Bruce looking very good also in this junior A championship so far. Then just this evening, uh, we had a midweek game. We had St. Rishas feathered against Temple Moor. Uh, that game was in feathered, and St. Rishas won that three goals and seven points to two goals and eight points. Uh, so in the coming this coming weekend in the Junior A Championship, we have Laura against Kiladangan at six o'clock. That's on Saturday. And we also have Holy Cross Ballycal against Drum and Inch. Uh, Drum and Inch with two defeats so far to Moneygall and Feathered will be looking for a victory there, as will Holy Cross. That's a crucial game. And then Moneygall take on St. Rich's Feathered at six o'clock. Moneygall at home. That is the Junior A Championship this weekend. Uh, the Junior B Championship then at the weekend, the results, Cash King Cormacks won for McCarthy Burroughs, 4-15. Massive win for McCarthy Burroughs, who have uh, beaten everyone so far. Um, all the games they've played so far looking really good. Uh, hot favourites for this competition, having reached the county final last year. And um, plenty of up-and-coming talent there in McCarthy Burroughs, and they're looking really well so far. So a big win for them. Then tomorrow evening, uh, as we're in another midweek game, we have Portro at home to Gartnahoo Glengool. So interesting to see how that game goes. Uh, Portro had a good week, over, a good win over uh, Cashel so far in the competition. Um, so just other Tuner B games are coming up at the weekend. Carrick Swans take on uh, Gartnahoo. That's on Sunday at two p.m. Uh, Carrick Swans are at home. Then McCarkey Burris are at home against Portro at six p.m. Um, and then St. Cronin's taking on Ballingarry, that game is at 6 p.m. And My Rovers taking on Silvermines also at 6 p.m. So they're all Sunday games uh, in the Junior B Championship. Um, now let's look ahead to the Senior Championship. Uh, games happening at the weekend. First of all, we'll call out a few fixtures there this weekend in the Senior Championship on Saturday. We have Knockville and Silvermines at 6 p.m. in Dundrum and Burgess to Harry take on Turles at 3 p.m. on Saturday. So two games in the June, in the Senior Championship Group 1. The Group 2 um, aren't out this weekend. But last weekend, we had some cracking games. We had Clonty, Rossmore and Drummond Inch. Uh, that game finished 116 to Clonty, Rossmore, 312 to Drummond Inch, two-point win for Drum. And after the game, I caught up with both managers and captain of Drummond Inch team, Maria Deveston. Joined now by Drummond Inch manager, Pat Ryan. Pat, two-point win there. You must be pleased. Very pleased, yeah. First, um, first test of the season, really. Um, you're always going. To, you're always going to get a tough game against Clonty Rossmore. They brought it to us again today, and we, we overcame it, yeah. And like there was only a goal in it at half time, two points in a full. They definitely were on top at different stages. Were you worried there any time? I was only worried about ourselves because we weren't we weren't playing as well as we could be. We uh, we started off with a, with a blaze of glory. We, we were playing the game plan we wanted to play, and then we kind of reverted back into. I suppose sloppy if you want a, if you want a better word for it, and we um we, we, we let him back into the game, and it, it, at this level you can't do that against a team like that. And there was huge battles throughout the field, likes of caught the van and Eve from McGrath. Just 
really good quality come over to watch. Huge, yeah, sure. They're, they're, they're inside each other's pockets in county training and, and here at club level as well, but they, they know each other's game inside out. So I suppose in one way, they kind of nullify themselves to, in, in one sense. But there was every one of them. We had the new girls played tremendous. Katie Dwyer on side, Caroline Shannon was immense here, winning ball wing forward. Neve Ryan made her start and Anya Greed came in again. So look, it, 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 we're, we're getting stronger, I think. And you're happy then, obviously, with the strength and depth in the panel. Yeah, getting there. Yeah, before the four, we were we were iffy. We were about four, like the first four, first three years, we used 16, 17 players. We have 20, 21, 22 players now that are putting their hand up, and the, the you know we we'll need them all. Brilliant. Next up, Anacarty at home. Anacarty at home, yeah. And then again, another another huge um, another huge occasion. Ne it's never it's never a foregone conclusion against Anacarty either. They bring. They bring their game, so hopefully we'll have the advantages at home this year for the first time in about three or four years. So look, if we get them back to the rag, hopefully we'll perform again and take the two points again. Perfect, thanks a million. No right now by uh, Drummond Inch captain Ray Davison. Ray, you must be delighted with that win. Absolutely delighted. It's a really tough battle. Absolutely wrecked after it, but like the quality that Clonty bring to the game and the toughness, like we really struggled. They really put it up against us. Tough 60 minutes, but we knew if we came and put in a performance, we get we get the match, and thankfully yeah, we came out on top. Uh, you got to a great start to go on the point within the first few minutes. Was that spoken about before the match, about trying to get off to a good start? Um, yeah, I suppose in the past now we've always kind of been slow to get going. It takes us maybe 10, 15 minutes to get into the match. But today now we just said we'd go at them. If the goal opportunity came, we'd take it and we'd be cynical. Um, so when the balls went in there, the girls just straight for goals, absolute beeline for it. And it paid off for us. But Clonty came back at us again and it went r right down to narrows, only a couple of points in the difference for a finish. Yeah, only three points in the half time, only two at the full time. It just shows any time you two teams meet, it's always real close. And I suppose if you were to meet later on again in the championship later on, it'll be the same. Yeah, I've no doubt we'll, we'll meet them again in the championship. We've great respect for Clonty and, and I think they have great respect for us. And you can see it out on the field, like the level of Camogie that has played there this morning is savage. And it's just Tipperary Camogie going from strength to strength. But it was a fabulous game to play. I really, really enjoyed it. And I, I'm sure they got loads of learnings out of it as well. But no doubt we'll meet them again. And next week then it's Anna Carty at home. Yeah, another strong one. Um, really tough group group with those two teams. So we'll regroup now and we'll get the recovery in and refocus in. But that'll be another big, big battle. And like the likes of Caroline Shannon there and Kate Wire getting those games under their belts this early in championship, it's brilliant for us. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Mered. Thanks for now by James Heffernan, and Clonty Rossmore manager. James, your thoughts after that match? Yes, look, we're 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 disappointed, I suppose. Um, you know, we, we probably probably gave ourselves a mountain to climb. We gave, I think, Drum probably a six-point lead, maybe twice in the in the first half, and then maybe again in the second half. Uh, you can't really afford to give Drum any kind of leeway at all like that. But overall, I thought we kind of fought very well. We stayed in the game. Um, it would be nice to get the results, but look, after after getting the win the first day, we're we're um, you know probably got to a good start, so we're still we're still um, probably happy enough. After two games, you know, it was all going to be difficult to get a, get a win here today, but probably thought uh, Drum looked very, very good at, at the start. We maybe stood off in a small bit, um, so there's definitely lessons there to learn going forward, you know. Yeah, like you said, you, loads of lessons to be learned, loads of positives in the game as well. You know, you, you, Drum got off to a great start, but you know, Clonty dominated for a lot of that game and showed great heart and determination. Yeah, we had a lot of young girls there as well, like Orla, Orla Ryan made her debut inside and goals as well. Uh, Trails was injured, and uh, you know we had a couple of you see Aoife Burke, uh, Lorna Ryan. I know Lorna was there last year, and uh, Sophie Maher as well. So we had a couple of new players, and and Kate Farnham was a lot of new players, and uh, you know we're happy that we blooded them. And tough game, big big crowd here, big big kind of home crowd here, and you know it takes a bit of getting used to as well. So like we're, I suppose overall we're probably happy enough, you know. Yeah, like you said, great atmosphere. I suppose these two teams have served up classics the last few years, and yeah. today was no different. It was probably one of the best games I've seen in a few years. It was right down to the wire, and I suppose you had a chance at the end of a free, but time was up, so we had to lob it in, but nothing came out of it. Really. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I suppose we, we were, uh, we probably drummed in score for maybe the last 10, 15 minutes. Um, as I said, we were six points down. We probably probably would have done well to get a result out here, out here today, you know, but um, uh, yeah, sure, I suppose. I had to know really how to sum it up, but yeah, it was a very physical game now. I found, yeah, um, good game to watch, some great scores, and you know, probably on both on, on both sides. Um, and like so you yeah. said, getting the win over Anna Carty the first day out was crucial for this group. And yeah, you're in a good position now playing Nina next weekend. We are, and like Nina, yeah, like Nina beat us in the league earlier on the year. Um, so you know, get that if you can get a win there, obviously, we're through to a quarter final, I'd imagine, but um. You know, like we like we we do have a lot to work on over the next couple of weeks. You know, so um, probably decent place to be. You know, but uh, 
uh, I suppose any day, any day that, that you know, if you don't win, like you're probably disappointed. So, yeah. yeah. Thanks, man. All right. Thanks. Thanks. So the other game played in that group was Nina Erog and Erog and uh, A big shock here, I suppose, um, for many outsiders. Uh, a draw game, one twelve to one twelve. Um, a very close game, little between the sides, point point really in the first half. Anna Carty then just with a one point lead at the break. Second half saw Anna Carty pull away, built up a six point lead against Nina, but Grace Nina they fought back brilliantly. Uh, Grace Bryan was excellent, scored one eight. So we Grattan, Kerry Howard, Caroline Brown, Michelle Collins, all uh, getting on the scoreboard. Um, you know, and a great result really for for Nina, who were in a very tough group against Clonty Drum and Anna Carty. But they um, secured a draw there in that game. So they'll be happy with that. Uh, and a Carty Championship not get, getting off to the start. They would have wished a uh, defeat to Clonty and to draw with Nina. Now they're certainly feeling the loss of Gemma Fox and Sarah Burke go out with crucial injuries. And Siobhan O'Neill also out injured at the, at the moment. Uh, Cora Heffernan got their goal and um, scores also from Jean Kelly and Nina Heffernan. But they have a game now this weekend are in... Two weeks time, sorry, against Roman Inch that we, they'll be really needing to get a result there and get some kind of result um, to guarantee that third spot in the group. Uh, so big game for for, ne- for Anna Carty uh, against Drum, while Nina will, will take on Clonty. Uh, in the other group then, Cash Cormix and Burge Dohara played out another really close, hard-fought game. Um, very little between the sides, score for score, really. Um then Burgess went ahead with a Cueva Maher goal, but uh, Cash responded with a goal of their own from Cueva Purdue, uh, who was excellent throughout. And um, then really Cash got two points in succession to give them a two-point advantage with the clock ticking down. Kira Maher responded with a point of her own in the 33rd minute to reduce Cash's lead to just a single point, but uh, Burgess then ran out of time and Cash were victorious on a single point, 113 to 112. Cracking game of Camogie. Um, Cueva Purdue uh, back from hockey duty scoring one two and a fatty three points. Nicole Shelley with a point, Cream Blair with four points, Philly Forty a point, and Anya Dwyer with a point. Birds of then Cueva Mar with a goal and four points from midfield, and Jenny Grace with six points. Excellent again on freeze, five from freeze, and um, was really impressive from general play. Kira Maher then with two points as well. So, really interesting result there. A one point win for Cash of King Cormix. Uh, in the other game, Tordas Sarsfields. Had a good win over Silverwines, 119-25. To look at this game a bit uh, more, I'm delighted to be joined by Thomas Connolly from the Nina Garden. Thomas, um, I suppose it was a close first half between Sarsfields and Silverwines, but in the second half, Turla seemed to find another gear and run out winners. Yeah, Turla showed their class uh, eventually, and I think most would probably have predicted that that would be the case. Now, Silverwines, and, and I've said this in, in the report, in the Garden, I do think Silver Mines are a coming team. I mean, there is potential in that team. They're still relatively young. Um, Their work ethic is incredible. I I was hugely impressed with their work ethic, even when the game had, uh, you know, the game had effectively gone from them. They still still carried on trying. Thurles had the upper hand. Um, But Silver Mines kept pushing and they kept grinding. And, And they're just an interesting team to observe. Like, I'll talk about Sarsfields in a minute, but... I look at that Silver Mines team and I just think if they can discover how to remain in the game for maybe, per se, 45, 50 minutes, because they faded away after half time and, and once Thurlis gained the upper hand, there was kind of no coming back. But I've kind of noticed, even, even watching them last year as well with Silver Mines, they have players there, the likes of Ellen Cunneen, uh, Elaine Murphy, even, who, who can do damage. And if they can learn to just stay in the game that little bit longer uh, until that final quarter, that kind of final 15-minute window, I actually think they may be able to take a scalp off one of the bigger teams. You know, they're not that far off it. Uh, They're still young. And in fairness, you know, Mark Jennery is is an excellent coach. He's very astute. You know, uh, he's very detailed tactically and he knows what he's doing. And I do think they're evolving as a side. Okay. Um, I suppose I wasn't at the game, but uh, any reports I, I heard for, about it, a lot of talk, you know, that Karen Kennedy was the best player on the field, but also that Andrea Lachnan, um, I think she finished with five phenomenal scores from play. And was that kind of the difference between the two sides? 
It was, and it was amazing because Andrea had been, I won't say anonymous, but but she hadn't been really that visible in the first half, and she just burst into the game come the second half. I mean, she she got a, you know, she hit five beautiful scores all from play, you know, really sweet individual efforts. Um, and I, I was highly impressed with her. I, I, I have to say, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm thinking to myself in terms of potential for, a, you know, the Tipperary team next year, whoever comes in as boss, you know, she's a player that you could look at genuinely. And I don't want to put, you know, pressure on pressure on the player at all. But she certainly has one if she can if she can continue to, to fire like that. I mean, she, she you know, Turles have serious ammunition up front and she's part of that and then I mean I suppose Karen Kennedy what can you say I mean her, her class and her experience again she probably wasn't well she was in the first half I mean she was she was influential in the first half and she scored an incredible goal I mean I was watching her around the middle third and I I kind of looked down to my phone to send out a tweet at one stage and looked back up and the next thing she was peeling down the wing and she scored an awesome goal uh, which kind of set the two sides apart in the first half. Then in the second, she kind of, she, I think Karen Kennedy is best when she's given the freedom to get forward, you know, to get the ball in hand and to make these bursting explosive runs forward and to kind of launch the attack. And that she did that to maximum effect on, on Saturday evening. Now, the, the, the test, I think, for Thurless will be, when you come up against a Clonalty or a Drum and Inch, and when you have forwards like um, uh, to Cotavan or so, or if it's Drum and Inch, you know, you've Miriam Campion, you've Mairead Everson coming at you from, from the half back line, Emer McGrath there. When you have to, when Karen Kennedy has to take on that defensive role, will she be able to attack and get forward like she did last Saturday? And I think it will be up to the other Thurless players then. Uh, to really step up and, you know, to take the initiative because, you know, Karen Kendi is so influential. She's such a big presence for them. Um, but she's best when she's in an offensive and attacking mode. That's the kind of, I think, centre-back she is. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting because I was at the Cashel and uh, Turla Sarsfield's game and like that, you know, First half, definitely, she was concentrating on her job, which is her main job as a defender, number six. Um, but as the game went on, especially in the second half, I could see her coming more and more forward. And I was kind of thinking if she had done that earlier in the game, could they have, you know, snatched the win in that game? But, yeah, it is it is a fair point against different opposition. Can she afford to do that? Or could Turles afford to play her in midfield? And, you know, maybe someone like Laura, Laura Lachnan or Emma Carey pick up that centre-back spot? Well, well, that is another thing, you know, and there's a bit of risk taking involved here because, I mean, you know, the benefits of having of having anywhere, you know, if she's anywhere around the middle third, Karen Kennedy is going to be influential. I mean, that's the reality of it. So, you know, I, I would, you know, advocate maybe moving her out of centre back because she still is, I suppose, on a bit of a leash there. Uh, there, you know, she she can get forward. All right. But she has to still hold the line and hold the center to a certain extent. So maybe it restrains her a little bit. She's definitely, you know, in a more advanced role in the middle third, she is best. And as you mentioned there, the likes of Laura Lachman, I could see stepping up. I mean, it's a, obviously center back is a big position. It's often branded the most important position on the field. And it's particularly big in the club game. You know, whatever about inter-county, I mean, there's a huge weight of responsibility that comes with playing centre-back in either club-level camogie or hurling, you know, and that is the reality of it. But as I say, it will take a bit of a, it might be a bit of a risk, but I think it might be a risk worth taking because, I mean, Thurless have it in them to challenge, to challenge the big guns. You know, from what I saw in that second half, they powered ahead in the second half on, on Saturday evening. And I do think if they can, you know, when when up against a bigger opposition, they, they do have the potential to rise to the occasion. So, you know, they, they might look at their formation, they might look at their setup, um, but I certainly think they are ones to watch this year. Okay. 
And uh, they certainly will have a big game uh, this weekend coming, playing um, Burgess to her on Saturday at half two in Kilcoman. So, you know, a win there. And I think if they can win by more than three points, they're looking at possibly topping the group and going straight into a semi final. Um, either way, they should be uh, guaranteed, I think, a, a quarter final spot. So, We'll see a lot of Turles, uh yes, still to come this year. But uh, any other players from, from that game that you were impressed with between either Silvermines or Turles? I mean, look, the, the Canines, Ellen Canine is always, uh, you, you know, it, it, she she's a hot shot up front. She's a real, she's a really good sharpshooter and she's, you know, uh, she's really consistent on the freeze, I have to say. Now she, you know, she will, I suppose, develop physically. She's still young. Um, and she'll have more of a presence there, but I think I, I think she is definitely a player to watch. Elaine Murphy was an, is another one. Elaine Murphy is very experienced at this point now. You know she was away for a few years. She's back on that team. She she put over two frees in the second half. Um, now the game was probably gone at that stage, but she's a useful weapon uh, to have up up front. Um, th- there are a number. I think as a collective. I think both Silver Mines and Perlis operate well. They're they're very cohesive. You know, they they're able to knit together moves and uh, they work well as a unit. Now, whether they'd be able to do that against bigger opposition remains to be seen. But I, I would focus more on on the collective in in you know in both respects. Um, I think that both teams have a way to go. Now, Perlis are definitely a little bit further down the line. And it would be very interesting to see against Burgess Duhara next weekend. Um, because I think, I would probably fancy Thurless for that one. And I think maybe Thurless might be, might have come into this championship slightly under people's radar. Uh, you know, obviously Drum and Clenalty are, are, the, are the two top dogs and, and Drum are our favourites again to retain their county title. And I think Thurless will be quietly watching one of them and thinking... You know what? We can we can take one of these down. Uh, I think there's I think there's definitely potential for that to happen. Yeah, loads of exciting uh, contests still to go in this FBD Insurance Senior Championship. Thomas, thanks a million for joining us, and we'll no doubt touch base with you again as the season progresses. Pleasure, Geraldine. Thank you. Now I'm delighted to be joined now by Philly Ryan from Borland. Well, uh, Philly, you're welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Geraldine. And we're just going to have a look at the Intermediate Championship uh, so far. We have three weeks played now. Uh, Borlan, obviously your own club, up from Junior A last year. Three matches, no victory as of yet, but, you know, we're quite competitive and, you know, some very close games in all three of them. Yeah, we were we were competitive in all three games. We were level with Killeran, 180 each with, with 10 minutes to go in the last 2-2. Uh, we, we led, no, we drew, we were level with Boris Lee at half time after playing against the wind. And Boris Lee hit us with three goals in a seven minute spell. And I suppose the last match was against Shannon Rovers. And Shannon Rovers throughout the game seemed a bit better than us. Uh, they had more score power up front and they cleverly played uh, Ethan Malachny as sweeper. And she'd done a lot of damage as sweeper there. So, yeah, we I suppose. Um, we were thrilled to win the, the Intermediate League, uh, which was a fantastic as silverware after coming up from Junior A. But um, we still have three three matches left and, and, and hope mathematically we can still uh, qualify. Just, um, it's a really interesting Intermediate Championship, Geraldine. Kilowan, Newport, Boris Lee, Shannon Rovers are all on two wins, but Shannon Rovers, Boris Lee and Kilowan have all lost again, which is, which is, so there's no one running away with it. And, um, as I said, Borlan and Toome have no pints yet. Uh, and Kerr uh, lost the match, but they scored 17 times against Shannon Rovers. So Kerr are no pushovers either, and Kerr have already recorded a win against Killeran. So I suppose the, the slight shock of the tournament is, I suppose, Killeran going away to Boris Ali and, and beating Boris Ali away. I suppose that was a slight shock. Maybe Boris Ali with two wins under the belt thought it maybe possibly uh, could beat Killeran, but so... Uh, that's the only result I was surprised with. Uh, so uh, Kilowan are back in back in uh, the running now with two wins. So um, I don't know what your thoughts on the Intermediate Championship so far, uh, Geraldine Nares, but it's very even at the top, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely is. And I suppose similar to last year, um, I suppose anyone can really make the top four. And that's then when, when it really comes alive in the semi-finals and, and 
I suppose about peaking at the right time, but you have to get through through a lot of tough games and be winning, you know, a good few of them to, to make the top four. Um, I think Newport there is have two wins from two. Only played two games, but they look really they've looked really sharp in their first two games and they had a huge spread of scores against Tumi Vara, big win against Tumi Vara. See Keely Lennon scoring one six, Emma Flanagan, Anya Finn, all getting on the scoreboard. Sirsha McGrath is excellent um, from freeze and from play. So um, I think they could be a dark horse maybe for, for this championship uh, team that didn't make the top four last year, but looking really well, impressive for me already. I suppose of the teams Borland have played so f- or have played so far, who would you fancy maybe that could be potential winners? It's it's a hard to call it. Um... Boris Ali had a very young uh, uh, forward uh, set up. They had Emma Maher and Eve Fitzgerald, both county under 16 panellists. Ava Beavins went on a sub, another county under 16 panellists. So, uh, and Danny Ryan up front. So, Boris Ali had loads of minors up front and uh, and were very effective against us. So, um, a lot of youth coming through on the Boris Ali side. Um, uh, Shannon Rovers. They've the Ryan back since they played G, I think, as well, isn't it? Teresa Ryan back uh, and, and had been a, a former uh, county centre back. So a huge addition uh, for Boris Lee having Teresa Ryan back as well. So um, uh, Kid Killerwan had are playing um, Laura Shinners up front and very effective to score points and play as well. So uh, um, teams making use of what um, what talents they have, I think, fairly well there. You know, so uh, uh, it's interesting that we 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 got to see uh, two. Uh, Played two matches in three days, Monday and Wednesday. It seems a bit hard on themselves there, but um, and and as a result of injuries, they, they probably suffered a big defeat in the second game. Uh, whereas they were still in the game with Borussia, uh, which uh, was great to see. It was it was on uh, live a live coverage of that. Uh, they were still in that Borussia League game right up towards the end. So it's hard to make out uh, which tomb we'll see later in the championship. Was the one that fought all the way against Boris Lee, or, or, or the one that didn't do well on the, on the Wednesday night? So um, we we'll wait and see uh, how uh, the bottom of the table figures out. Yeah, so still all to play for there. Just calling out, I suppose last weekend's results um, in the FBD Insurance Intermediate Championship: Orlando well at ten points, Shannon Rovers three nine, Boris Lee one eleven, and Killer One McDonough's three six. And then in the games coming up. This weekend in the Intermediate Championship, we have Newport, Banley Hinge for Spurs Lee. That game is at 6 p.m. on Saturday evening in uh, Newport or at home. Shannon Rovers versus Kilowan McDonald's. That's going to be a really interesting clash. That's at 6 p.m. Uh, in Ballanderry. And then Tumivara take on care in Tumivara at 6 p.m. Tumivara really needing a win after defeats in the first two rounds. Um, would you like to try and call any, any of those games there, Philly? Newport and Spurs Lee? Um, I, I, I think there's been six home wins so far, and um, I'm thinking uh, you said Newport are at home. I think Newport could pip that, yeah. And who's at home in the Killer Man, Shannon Rovers? Shannon match? Rovers are at home. I think that'll be a help, um, uh, to Shannon Rovers. But Killer Man uh, have been impressive with their two wins, so um, that's a real 50 50 one, Shannon Rovers, Killer Man. And I think Newport have the experience to pip the first one. And the third game, as you said, to Mavara need a win against Care, but they're at, they are at home and they might have their full contingent back. I don't know uh, what players are injured, but um, um, as you said, Roshan Howard is a huge factor for scoring with Care. They, if they have a system of marking Roshan Howard, um, they might be able to keep the Care score down. So um, um, I think uh, three home wins there, my, my guess. Very good, Philly. Um, just um, you mentioned earlier about uh, Eve Mlockney, so she was playing like a sweeper. She wasn't in the forwards at all against here, or was that just against the wind? Or uh, that was just for part of the game, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, she done sweeper in both halves and and scored some frees from very far out. So, uh, she was well outside the 45 65 midfield scoring some of the frees. So, her free taking was 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 superb and. Celine Guinan's sideline cuts were, were were very good as well. So uh, she could hit the ball a mile from sidelines as well. So uh, uh, lots of lots of skill on show there. Excellent. Okay, we'll turn our attention now to the Junior B2 Championship because uh, I know Philly you're involved your own club there, Borland. and uh, your first time ever having a Junior B2 team. Um what what you've seen so far of that? Do you want to give us a summary of I suppose the first few rounds of that Junior B2 championship? 
Well, I suppose to give some background to Junior B2, it's a fantastic new competition that's, that's not in existence for too many years. It's great to give uh, adult girls uh, camogie games, especially if they're uh, at the lower end of the subs on, on the club's first team. So it's a great idea. And so to know really started well with three wins and uh, um, with the likes of uh, talent coming through to Clonauty seniors like Aoife Burke, Sophie Maher and Kate Firmcombe uh, coming through, uh, county players, they're underage with tip coming through to Clonauty senior setup. It means, I suppose, players are regraded now to, to junior B2 with Clonauty second team. So it makes the Clonauty junior B2 two team very strong with some ex-seniors playing there on, on, on their junior B2 team. And uh, of course, um, Shannon Rovers and Borla have seemed to be struggling and uh, Belly Bacon have lost two games but the two games they've lost to Tlaunty and Toome have only been very slight defeats four points against Tlaunty and Toome so Belly Bacon are really competing this year against against the top teams so Tlaunty out in front and, and Toome and Anacarty uh, very close to Tlaunty there so uh, it's going to be a hard one to call and just to say unfortunately uh, we've had uh, players injured and players gone back to college and things. So uh, we're, we're really struggling Borland to field for our final three games against Toome, uh, Shannon Rovers and Flanolte. Uh, and we'll be in contact with the Fixtures Committee, Fixtures Secretary um, uh, today or tomorrow about our situation, which is uh, serious at the moment, uh, Geraldine, sorry to say. But um, uh, I think it's going to be between Flanolte, Toome and the Carty this competition. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, yeah, just last weekend, I suppose, only one match uh, Aero Ganacarty had a big win over Shan Rovers, 16 points, great scoring uh, against Shan Rovers, 1 7. So, Anacarty going well there in the junior B2. Um, and then just this weekend's fixtures, we have Clonty and Tumivara at 6 o'clock in Clonty. Anacarty then uh, are at home against Bally Bacon Grange at 6 o'clock. Uh, so, two games coming up there uh, this Sunday as well in the junior B2 championship. So, Anacarty and Clonty, I suppose, looking very strong. And as you said, Tumi Vara there as well. So, but still uh, all to play for in the in the Junior B2 Championship. And uh, we'll just turn our attention now to uh, the Under-15 competition. I know this is a great competition run by the Development Committee, uh, which you're very involved in, Philly. So, uh, what stage are we at now? Right, so we, we, we had um, uh, 12 quarterfinals played uh, at the weekend between Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday. Uh, we, we allow a bit of flexibility to the clubs at quarter-final stage to, to try and find a date first. At semi-final stage, it's a bit trickier now. We're down to semi-finals. So we have uh, Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3, Tier 4, Tier 5. We have five sets of semi-finals, and I'll call you out the draw in a second, um, at Geraldine. So at semi-final stage, we always look for neutral venues. So we'll be looking for the RAG or, or for some host clubs the weekend after next. Uh, this coming weekend is the All Ireland Under 15s, inter county. So, best look to tip A, Under 15A, and Under 15B. They're out in Mallow in the A competition and in Clara and Kilkenny for, for the B competition. So, that's the priority for this weekend. And the following weekend, then we'll see the Under 15 semi finals. And shall I call out the draw, Geraldine? Yeah, call out the draw, please. So in we 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 call they're called tiers I suppose because it goes on rows in how they finish their groups in in the league system the Celtic Challenge system of things so rather than A's B's and things so tier one the semi finals are Silver Mines versus Borlaan and Shannon Rovers versus Holy Cross in tier two Ballina play Newport Ballinahinch and Burgess play McCarkey in tier three. Nina play Nakavella and St. Rita's of Feddert play Ballybacon Grange. In Tier 4, St. Cronin's Ross Gray play Turles Sarsfields and Temple Moor play Boris Ali. And in Tier 5, St. Pat's, Dragon Clunine play against Killer Wan and Gortnahu play against Money Gall. So we, we have uh, the complete live draw was uh, filmed on the Facebook development page. Uh, earlier tonight, uh, if you want to watch the whole draw, but that's the draw as as called out there a minute ago, Geraldine. Uh, starting on the weekend of 16, 17, 18, 19, that weekend of September. Brilliant stuff. So loads happening there at under 15 level at both inter-county and the club scene. Uh, lots of very uh, interesting uh, 
uh, semi-finals coming up there, some really intriguing games, and uh, no doubt we'll have a few crackers there. And uh, we might get you on again, Philly, before um, them finals or even after them finals take place, just to see how it all uh, panned out. So, Philly, thanks a million for coming on, for covering Intermediate Junior B2 just, and under Just to mention, did I mention under 13? No, yeah, uh, okay, yeah. We're 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 making the draw uh, tonight or tomorrow night for the groups for um, for under thirteen in the system whether we'll have quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals and how many group matches that under thirteen is being uh, uh, put together by the development committee at the moment. Uh, also, then we have uh, uh, as part of the player pathway, we have our upcoming under thirteen uh, six week hurl wall sessions coming up and they're planned with guest coaches. And uh, also then, if possible, we're going to um, have a goalkeeping uh, uh, development a couple of weeks of that as well in, in the autumn. So lots happening for the younger players on the, developing their player pathway in the coming weeks. Brilliant stuff, Philly. Watch this space. Loads happening. Thanks very much. So that's all we have from this week's episode of the Camogie Report podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe and we'll see you again soon.